Heartland Highways is made possible in part by Consolidated Communications, offering customers high-speed internet, phone service, and digital TV service packages that include high-definition channels, DVR, and hundreds of sports, movies, and music channels. More information on these services available at Consolidated.com. This week we'll meet three very talented women with three very different crafts. The first story's a real catch as we take you to Lake Shelbyville with champion fisherwoman Mary Satterfield. Then it's off to Urbana, Illinois for a sweet story about Buffy Vance, a sugar artist who makes some impressive displays. And you won't want to take our last story lightly. Artist Susanna Fairley shows us the intricacies of painting on feathers. Stay tuned, Heartland Highways starts now. Thanks for joining us this week. I'm Lori Casey. And I'm Kate Pleasant. And as you can see, we're here at the Eastern Illinois University Campus Ponds. Now, occasionally people do fish here, and as we've been standing here, fish are actually jumping out of the water. Absolutely. And you know, if Mary Satterfield were here right now, she'd be reeling them in left and right. <laughs> That's right. This summer, Kate and I had the chance to spend some time with Mary fishing at her favorite place on Lake Shelbyville, about 40 miles from here. You can read all you want and you can buy a real expensive boat and all the tackle you need and everything that doesn't make you fishermen being on the water experience and if you don't learn something every time you're out there uh, it's your fault because you learn something i'll never quit learning things about fishing it's different every day and she should know because mary satterfield has been fishing most of her life as a little girl, she spent a lot of her time fishing in a little creek near her home. And I would go down there and sit on the little concrete bridge amongst the cows and fish in this little creek that ran into the Kaskaskia River, which is Lake Shelbyville now. So actually I was fishing Lake Shelbyville before it was here. <laughs> As Mary mentioned, Lake Shelbyville wasn't always here. It was completed in 1970 by the Corps of Engineers as a flood control lake for the lower Mississippi River. Shortly after its completion, anglers like Mary took advantage of this 11,000 acre lake. It's got crappie, it's got walleye, it's got muskie, it's got largemouth, and now they've started uh, stocking smallmouth in it. And uh, white bass, I don't know if I said that, white bass, plus all the catfish and whatever, any kind of fish you want to fish for. And you never know what you're going to catch. The lake and Mary's passion for fishing eventually turned into a career as a guide and a professional angler. I started fishing local tournaments around here um, in the early 70s. And typically back then, it, well, it was all men's tournaments and I was the only woman for years mm -hmm. in them. So, they all knew me and a lot of them still know me because I got the attention because I was the only woman and because I did well in them too. Mm -hmm. And then in 1984, Passengal, the National Ladies Circuit that was going at that time, had a tournament on Clinton Lake. Mm -hmm. And that was a, being out here in the country, that was the first time I knew there was a woman's professional circuit. So um, I entered it and didn't do very well. It wouldn't take long before Mary started winning, fishing both men's and women's tournaments around the country. Her many career achievements include Bass and Gals two-time national champion, Lady Bass Angler of the Year, Classic World Champion, and that's only a partial list. Even though she's made a career of fishing, doing it professionally is a lot of hard work, long days, and time on the road. And you fish hard all day. Typically when I was there I'd be the first one on the water of a morning, usually before daylight. And I was younger then. <laughs> That's one reason I'm not doing it now because I don't like to get up that early anymore. <laughs> but you fish hard all day and, and uh, like I heard a guy say one time, then you, you fish all week real hard just hoping you're going to get paid at the end of the week and then you drive two more days to get home. In the early 90s Mary left the pro circuit but continued to guide. 
Since 1989, she's been a professional fishing guide on Lake Shelbyville in central Illinois. Her 40 years of fishing these waters mean she's well equipped to know where and when the fish are biting. So on a warm and sunny June day, she took Kate and I out for a few hours of bass fishing or whatever was biting that day. Since Kate and I are not what you'd call morning people, we were pleased to find out that Mary does most of her fishing during the day. Most of the best catches, quality and quantity wise, on the lake have been in the middle of the day, you know, and they say you can't use top water baits in the middle of the day. Well, you can. And I've caught a lot of fish on buzz baits, big, big bass on this lake and lots of lakes. As predicted by Mary, the fish decided to be camera shy. Of course, the day before we arrived, Mary and her guide clients caught more wildlife than ever before. Oh well, our skilled guide managed to reel in a few bass and walleye. Kate caught a bass and I caught nothing. Nevertheless, you can't beat the serenity on a lake like this. It has what's known as a green belt around it, which strictly limits building on the lake property. All around the lake, it's all federal property. And that's partly, they don't allow houses to be built on it, partly because of the way the level fluctuates. But it's like being out in the wilderness, because you don't see, the only thing right on the lake are the three big marinas, and everything else is just woods. I just feel we're all blessed to have it here in this area, you know. Because Lake Shelbyville's primary purpose is flood control, the lake levels can change significantly, sometimes as much as 16 feet over normal pool. But this change in the lake creates new fishing opportunities. When the lake first starts to come up and it comes up real fast, it'll shut it down. The fishing gets really tough. The water will get pretty muddy for a few days, maybe a couple weeks. Um, but then, they, they, once they get used to it, they turn on. But when we have high water and you got all these willows and everything, it, it's just a different lake. And the lake's a lot prettier when it's high because you don't see those bare clay banks. When she's not guiding or working, you can probably find Mary fishing. Her persistence and never give up mantra from her professional days is still evident when she's on the water, either with clients or just fishing for fun. As soon as the lake thaws out, whether it's like the middle of March, February or end of January, or if it's thawed out in January, we fish. And some of the, some of the best crappie fishing is then, you know. Even though she's fished rivers and lakes around the country, Mary says there's no place better than Lake Shelbyville. We have some of the nicest facilities here. Like I said, I've been all over of about any place I've been. The regular boat ramps, you know, you can launch four or five boats at a time on them because they're wide, they're nice, they're concrete, they got steps down the sides of them, nice docks. So I am proud of the facilities that we do have here in the state of Illinois, you know. I love Lake Shelbyville and it's got a good fish population and it's intimidating to a lot of people because, um, well, any lake can be challenging, but that's what fishing is. That's the challenge, to go out there and try to figure out what they're doing and how to catch them. Uh, the catching part's just a bonus. Just like somebody hunting, it's the experience, just being out there. Yeah, he's probably just, he, he might be 15 inches. Going back. While Mary is one talented fisherwoman, there's no need to sugarcoat it. This next lady is just as talented. From her studio in Urbana, Illinois, artist Buffy Vance creates displays so good that you could eat them. I've always loved to bake, so that's, that's my first love. And I love color. I've always um, enjoyed painting. And when I could, found I could put the two together, that was, I found my medium. So I just kind of found myself. So a sugar artist is an artist, you do need, um, you need a little bit of that creativity and your medium is sugar, it's cooked sugar, it's rolled fondant, which is kind of like um, a Play-Doh, you know, sugar Play-Doh. So you can add little different things to it and make it a little more brittle, that makes the sugar flour. So it's just all the different mediums that are edible, so you can eat your mistakes. Mmm, sounds good, but how does one get into sugar art? Buffy Vance's story is pretty interesting. 
Actually, I was um, a wedding cake designer and baker for many years. Um, just due to life circumstances, I had to go back into corporate field and work to make a living and provide for my children. So I just did that and then after a while I thought, why am I still doing this? You know, my youngest son is married. So I started looking to come back into my field and um, I, I just happened to find this place. I was talking to my hairdresser. She had a beautiful space and it really inspired me to start looking and I found this, there's a, um, it's an art gallery, uh, district incentive that the city of Urbana does and um, it's the rent is subsidized for the first year so that made it financially possible for me to to do my art. And so Madeline's confectionery art studio and gallery began in downtown Urbana right next to Cinema Gallery which you may remember from one of our season 7 stories. But what's more interesting than Madeline's location is how it got its name. I named it after my childhood hero, Madeline. I was kind of a scared little girl, and I love that story. I just, and it, the book mysteriously disappeared because I mean, it was constantly reading that story, reading that story. She wasn't afraid of the lions. She just said poo poo, and she'd walk on the fence, and she just was not afraid. And I, I always admired that. And um, when it came time in my life to step out on my own and to, to just follow my passion and get into my field. That's a really scary thing to leave security. And it just kind of came to me, don't be afraid, be like Madeline. And I thought that's the name, I'm gonna, I'm gonna name it Madeline. So every time I hear it or see my logo or see it, it just kind of, I just feel very empowered and very grateful. Buffy creates custom cake toppers and does sugar art displays over styrofoam in the back room of Madeline's and displays and sells art from other local artists in the front room, which also doubles as a classroom. Anyone can sign up to learn some trade secrets in one of Buffy's cake decorating classes. She also offers basics in Cake Decorating 101 and has a class all about fondant. People have seen everything on Food Network and you know they've tried it maybe and they're a little discouraged and they they'll come in and they I mean, they're wanting to do it but yeah oh I could never do that. What makes my class different is that everything is here. There's student kits for use in class. So there's nothing to purchase. Students walk in, I give them an apron and they learn how to ice a cake, how to make it look pretty, how to do borders. Um, second week we learn how to make all different kinds of flowers and then the third week we work on a project that they get to take home with them. They decorate a cake and they're able to take that home. And if that sounds intimidating, Buffy can assure you it's not. In fact, she says cake decorating is so easy anyone can do it. Cake is something that's not really threatening. Everybody knows how to make a cake. Everybody makes a really good tasting cake. It's just, you know, having the technique to know how to make it pretty. And so I think people have seen my work and have um, talked to students, and I think they're attracted to just the idea that, hey, maybe I can do that too. Maybe, you know, maybe there's something, maybe I can do that too. And they can. It's just a tiny little bit of technique, and then it's, it's easy. Buffy demonstrated just how easy it is during our visit by showing us how to make a cake that looks like pizza. It's just a single, a single layer of real cake. It's iced with um, just buttercream frosting, whether, uh, whatever kind you want. Then I take a jelly, um, a strawberry jelly, and stir that up and I add some yellow paste food color to it so it gets kind of an, an orangey ragu look. Put that on, and um, then I take cookies, sandwich cookies, and unscrew them, turn them upside down, scrape off the icing, and airbrush them orange. And I have some of the um, little truffle candies that I cut in half to make it look like sausage. And get white chocolate and grate that all over the top. You're always supposed to put something real next to it so it looks real, so I always put like a pizza cutter or something next to it and put it in a real pizza box. So it kind of folds the eye that way. The inspiration for cakes like the one that we just saw comes from all over. 
Buffy says it may be food she sees at the grocery store that she envisions repurposed for cakes, kind of like the cookies she used for the pepperonis on the pizza cake. But sometimes she just gets inspired by her surroundings. I love coming to work with my little shop dog Bosco and um, it's, it's just a very, it's a peaceful place. This has always been a very creative um, district. This has been a very creative building. It was an opera house. It was um, a ballet studio. So um, having art here and then being able to create my art is really important. Having artists stop in or people wanting to see the art, it's, just, it's very inspiring. So I used to sit and daydream in my cube you know, and just between emails and try to, you know, I'd cut out pictures of cakes and put them up on the cubby and, you know, every once in a while think about it. Now it's just, um, and, you know, of course, starting two businesses at first, it's a little, a little bit of work, but now I'm able to start going into the studio and doing my, doing my art. So that's, that's nice. I, get, I, I just enjoy being in my field. And if you're someone who daydreams about someday realizing your own passion or talent, Buffy has some advice. I wrote out what I wanted and I just started to believe in it and believe in myself and just not be negative and complaining about the way things were, but sort of living in, in how I wanted them to be, sort of believing what I hoped for. And so that's what I would say. I would just say, just go ahead and dream and then just believe in what you hope for. If you'd like to purchase a copy of any Heartland Highways program, just visit our online store at weiu.net. DVDs are available for $20 each. Visa, MasterCard, or Discover are accepted. If you prefer, you can call in your order at 1-877-727-9348. Just let us know what show you're interested in by mentioning the story name or the person featured in the show. Please allow four to six weeks for delivery. While Buffy uses fondant for her art, Susanna Fairley uses something completely different. An experienced artist, Susanna had always painted on unique items like milk jugs and hats. Now she takes it up a level and paints on, of all things, feathers. Susanna Fairley has always been a painter, but what makes her unique are the canvases she paints on mostly because they aren't canvases at all. I really like a challenge. I think over time, uh, canvases got kind of boring for me, so I started painting murals on walls. Um, I've painted different textures, different uh, patterns on hardwood floors, uh, I've painted cowboy hats. Uh, probably the biggest challenge I ever did on a cowboy hat, I had someone bring me one that was a long haired one. They wanted me to paint an Indian head on it. And I knew there was no way I could do that. So one night I just set it up in the corner and looked at it for a while. One night I got it down and I took a razor and I shaved off the front of it and <laughs> painted it on there, but it worked out. Uh, painted milk cans, saw blades, slate, you know anything I can get my hands on. Recently, Susanna got her hands on a completely new medium. Well, new to her anyway. We had gotten tickets to uh, Quails Unlimited Banquet in Teotopolis, and I've never been to anything like that, so my husband and I went. Uh, the second year that we went, my husband wasn't able to go, my father-in-law was with me, and uh, they had this painted turkey feather, and it was just a beautiful scene on it. And, it was in a live auction. It ended up bringing, I think, $280. And uh, my father in law's kicking me underneath the table. He says, you know, you could do that. And I'm thinking, yeah, I'd like to try it. It looked interesting and it was a challenge, which is what I really like. So uh, the next day I went online, got on the computer, you know, started looking at different websites um, under Tricky Feathers, found there was a lot of people doing them. So I started emailing some of the people and asking questions and uh, I, went on eBay, uh, picked up some feathers just to paint on, just to see how it worked, and uh, just kind of took off from there. Now, over 40 feather paintings later, Susanna has turned what started as a hobby into a business. She paints and then sells her feathers on her website, countryclassicoils.com, 
and displays them at a shop in Tuscola, Illinois. Like many artists, Susanna gets her inspiration for each feather in a variety of places. I like outdoors, you know, animals and, and um, you know, just old scenery. Um, I love old barns. It's just been a passion of mine for years. Um, and I, I really like photography. I don't know a lot about it, but um, I bought a nice digital camera last year and, and I just go out and take pictures of barns and old fence rows and um, birds and different things, you know, flowers in the backyard, butterflies. You know, and uh, people bring me a lot of pictures too. They pick, bring me pictures of their dogs or cats or houses and things to paint, so. Now after seeing those feathers close up, I couldn't help but think it must be hard to paint on a surface like that. As it turns out, it isn't easy, but with a little lacquer spray to hold the feathers together and a few base coats, the challenge is attainable, but still a challenge. And that's what Susanna enjoys most about it. Each one of them is kind of different depending on, you know, what part of the, the bird they're from. Uh, there's different textures. The wing feathers are real coarse and a lot stiffer. They're harder to work with, but they have, uh, they have a lot of colors and, and there's different scenes that you do on them that look better than, than on the tail feathers. Um, you know, the, the, the back tail feathers are a lot bigger than the others, so you have a lot more room to work with on those. The smaller feathers are finer and they're, they're easier to paint on, the, the paint flows a lot better, so just depending on which one you grab. Susanna's most recent challenge has been taking on the matting and framing of her art. With my love for old barns, um, all my frames I make out of old barn wood, and I've done my own matting. Um, you know, I try to do um, different ones for each Depending on what's on the scene, sometimes the red barn wood looks better on one, some with some white paint on it. Um, I've actually put some horseshoes on the frame on a horse once. Um, I braided some uh, horse hair and tied around the bottom of one of them with some beads on it. Um, I put barbed wire around them a lot. Susanna does all of her art in a machine shed on her property that she and her husband renovated into an art studio. Although she likes the peace and quiet of her shop, she doesn't mind the occasional visitor. I have a shop dog, yeah. She didn't start out that way. <laughs> it's my Annie. Um, I, it's been cold this winter, so um, I put a blanket down for her. Now she, she comes down here every day when I come to paint, and if I don't come down, she comes to the door at the house and scratches on the door and wants me to come down, so she pushes me a little, yeah. <laughs> Thanks to that little push she gets from shop dog Annie, Susanna has a few things on her list she hopes to accomplish in the near future. I'm trying to do some shows. I have my days freed now and, and uh, a couple of days during the week where I don't have to work, which is nice. Um, I can be down here all day long painting and, and my hope is, I have a show coming up, actually, I'm doing in March. Um, it's an all outdoor show um, up in Northern Illinois. And so I'm pushing to do a lot of um, hunting and fishing scenes right now to take to that. And, you know, we'll see how that works out, but I'd like to start doing a lot more of those. And my website right now, about all I have on there is the feathers. Um, when I get caught up someday, I'm gonna try to do some of, you know, the saws and Maybe this palm tree bark, if that works out. Uh, maybe some cowboy hats, too. That's something I'm not really seeing out there. I've done some research, and um, there's just not a market out there. So I might take off with that. Well, I guess we should call it a day, because our adventures are complete, for this week anyway. Thanks for coming along, and we'll see you next week on Heartland Highways. Heartland Highways is made possible in part by Consolidated Communications, offering customers high-speed internet, phone service, and digital TV service packages that include high-definition channels, DVR, and hundreds of sports, movies, and music channels. More information on these services available at Consolidated.com. That's a big one. I'll show you the inside of the mouth. <laughs> <laughs> He's on his back! <laughs> she 
she's talking about Kate. <laughs> well, it's the one with the teeth. <laughs> Muhammad. Do you want my John Deere hat? Do you want the fish? No. That's okay. Can I take your picture with the fish? Uh -huh. Why don't I don't to touch it. Can I hold it? Dear EIU, campus is noisy today. Love Heartland Highway. This next lady is Fox! <laughs> Right on your neck. It's on your Twitter. Right. Right. It's on Twitter. Here we go. Here we go.